The first behavior of top PhD students is they focus on data to papers. Now that's one thing that I've noticed across a range of PhD students is that a lot of really great PhD students just focus on experiments that lead to either data they can put in their thesis or data they can put in their peer-reviewed paper. Both are awesome. They don't just waste time doing anything willy-nilly. Oh, willy-nilly. They actually just really focus on all of the really sort of like uh, high impact experiments so they're not wasting their time early on in the research you know you do have to do a little bit of exploratory kind of research but then they realize what's working what they can publish what can go in their thesis and they really sort of like hone in on the high impact and outcome focused experiments and uh, that is something that uh, everyone loves because the professors love it because they get their names on papers the phd students love it because they um are working always to towards that end goal of writing their thesis or getting peer-reviewed publications. So it just makes for a great, awesome feeling in that PhD. The second behavior of top PhD students is they are doers. Now, when we're doing a PhD, we feel like there's so much we need to focus on. There's so much that uh, we need to understand before we do. But in fact, top PhD students start doing before they're ready. And I think that's a massive take home that you should get from this video. That is, you always feel like you're not ready to do the experiments. When in fact, when you feel just a tiny bit ready, you're ready. Go and learn by doing. The top PhD students learn from their mistakes mistakes, they're in the lab a lot, they're constantly working towards the outcome of getting that thesis, getting that peer-reviewed publication, so become a doer. Once you've read enough, enough is enough, go do something. Another thing I've noticed about top PhD students is they work how they want to work. Sometimes I'd look at the PhD students in like the physics department or the chemistry department where I worked and I was like, oh my god, you're schedule does not work with me at all like i could not do what you're doing but for them it was perfect one person in particular we'll call him josh because that was his name josh was just like this strange being who would turn up to the lab really early work really hard go home for a little sleep come back work for like another few hours then go back home have a little bit of a sleep and some food then come back until like 6 until 10 p.m and then he'd go back home have a, like a nap and then maybe come back to finish some experiments like from midnight to whatever and it was just really really crazy i don't think that is sustainable for most people but this guy worked really really hard and uh, it was in some ways very admirable and in some ways absolutely terrifying so you have to work with how you want to work and by the way josh also balanced that really hard work with playing hard as well that seems to be another trait of these phd students is they work hard and they play really really hard so importantly work with how you want to work if you want to squeeze everything into a few days and the flexibility in your research group allows you to do that then brilliant but try to sort of like create a environment and a system that works for you. Working nine to five arguably is the most boring way to do it, but that worked for me. I was in the lab, I was out of the lab whenever, and it just sort of like having a schedule like that worked. But for other people that's boring and they need to do this like mega cram, uh, you know, style of research. But working the way you want to work with the schedule that you want to create for yourself just seems to be the way to get the most out of your PhD because at the end of the day, it's all about you. The top PhD students know they should have parallel research tracks just in case one falls off the track. Oh, that didn't really work out as well as I was hoping. But ultimately they have like two or maybe three research tracks that they're working on simultaneously. That means if one really doesn't go to plan, you have another one going forward, you can pick up another one and they always have just a couple going on. And that's very important because sometimes you just want to sort of focus on one thing that you really love and enjoy, but the universe and the research world will decide whether or not it works or not. That is research. You don't get to decide if this will work, if this is the outcome you want. So 
Even though you're in love with this particular research track, you should really try to build one alongside a nice parallel research track so that if something goes wrong, you can continue forward. That's what a PhD is all about, continuing forward, relentlessly continuing forward in the face, in spite of all of the setbacks and all of the hardships that you face. So having that just means that you kind of are creating a little bit of a risk management system for your research. Check it out. Top PhD students seem to understand what a PhD really is. They are able to zoom out from the nitty gritty of the day, from the nuts and bolts of the research, of the analyzing of all of the things, and just able to see what a PhD really is. And that's a stepping stone for your career, a stepping stone for your life, they are not too worried about producing the best thesis in the world. They're just focused on producing a thesis. It is not about sort of like changing the world, despite when you go into it, you're like, oh, I'm going to change the world. Ba -ba -ba. But really, it is not about that. It is about convincing some crusty old academics in your research field that you've done enough to warrant a PhD. That's it. And essentially, you can kind of look at it like a really big, boring project. And I think that's kind of a nice mindset to have when things are going wrong, when you're not sure if you can finish. If you can finish like a simple lab project, you know, undergrad, you just kind of like expand on that. It's much bigger, it's much deeper, but it's really just a big version of that. So think about your PhD not as like the ultimate goal of your life and the thing that you should do the best in and you know it's that you should be able to change the world. It's just about producing a big old book, big old boring bit of work that someone reads and goes oh yeah this is long enough and boring enough to be a PhD and I think top research students realize that it is about that. It's that stepping stone. It's about jumping through some hoops. So just think about your PhD in terms of that, a stepping stone for your life and your career, and it really takes the pressure off. Top PhD students tend to also understand the game that they are playing very early on. The academic game is arguably one of the most frustrating games because it is all about two things, producing papers and getting money. As a PhD student, you're not really in sort of involve very much of getting the money. So you need to produce papers. Producing papers means that you should focus on creating results, creating papers, creating chapters, creating writing, sending off to people. Like the game is not to explore the world necessarily in that kind of like blue sky research sense. It's more about making sure you jump through the right hoops. And PhD students that do very, very well understand that very early on because it is about getting your PhD whilst also making sure your supervisor likes you for producing papers. If you can produce papers, they're more likely to get grant funding. Their H index goes up, their uh, prestige increases. All of this is what the game is about. And as a PhD student, you are part of the cog in the machine. And uh, I think early on PhD students that do well realize this and just sort of like go through the motions, play the game. And then after that, they you know move on with their lives, their career and do whatever they want. One. But uh, yeah, doing a PhD is really about understanding what academics want, despite what sometimes they tell you. Just produce papers for them, produce results, write papers, send them chapters of a paper, send them um, sections of a paper, get them sort of involved very early on, and your PhD will go swimmingly. Top PhD students are also very enthusiastic about their work. Now, I'm not saying that every PhD student needs to be enthusiastic, but they need to be able to talk about their research enthusiastically when required. And that's really it. So if someone talks to you about your research, you need to sort of like present the most interesting aspects to you. If you talk about the most interesting aspects for you, the enthusiasm will come out. Talk about the good aspects. It's very easy, particularly when you're in kind of a really negative environment in your research group or in your university, um, that you start complaining about things not working, about all the things. But some of the best PhD students that I've ever sort of like been around can talk about their PhD enthusiastically, even if their PhD isn't going well. 
And I think that is important because when you talk enthusiastically about your PhD, people are one are going to be around you. They're going to want to help you. They're not going to sort of dread every moment you come into the room. And this goes for your supervisor as well. If every time your supervisor sees you, you just complain about your research, how it's not going well, like, and you're not solutions focused, it just means that that relationship between your PhD supervisor and you is going to be strained. So even if you need to put on a little bit of a character to talk enthusiastically about your research, make sure you can at least do it. When you're talking to collaborators, when you're talking to people outside the university, when you're talking to your supervisor, when you're talking to other people, just make sure you've got a little enthusiastic bent on the things you talk about and it just makes things so much easier for everyone. There we are.